Hello, everyone. Um, first of all, thanks for Carlin for the amazing talk, and uh, thanks very much for the CNN for including me in this inspiring group of researchers, and congratulations to everyone. Today, I would like to take you on my journey of discovery, which has led me to this recognition. I am from a beautiful town of 500 people in the middle of Turkey called Kanlıca, Cappadocia. Growing up in such a small town, I could never imagine that I would be where I am today. As a kid, I thought that maybe I was going to be a music player or even a singer, nothing to do with science, as Carolyn. But I always had a passion for discovery and an exploration of the unknown. This passion has led me down the path of science and research at the chemistry department in Otodo Technic University, University, Middle East Technical University, Turkey. Here, I was offered to join the research labs of Professor Levant Topare in my first year, who was working on conductive polymers. It seemed very interesting because the word research sounded fun and exploratory. Well, nobody informed me that as a junior, you would mostly wash the chemical dishes of seniors in the lab. I was a member of Topare group for my bachelor and master's studies, and it was an unforgettable experience. It was also one of the pivotal moments in my academic life, as during this time, I first worked with polymers that can conduct electricity upon doping. I was fascinated to discover that you can change a single atom in an organic molecule, and it was enough to alter its electronic properties. This captivated me and made me want to explore further with these materials. And during this exploration, one property particularly intrigued me. The fact that these materials can absorb light and generate electricity, the so-called photovoltaic effect. Here you see a photovoltaic device or a solar cell. When light hits a solar cell, it is absorbed by the photoactive layer, which consists of a donor and acceptor material and then creates a charge. And this charge is transported to electrodes and electricity is generated. Isn't it beautiful? I was sure that I wanted to work on this topic and then moved to Germany, Erlangen, for my PhD studies and worked with Christoph Brabeck. Christoph is one of the pioneers in the field of organic solar cells and one of the most passionate people I've ever seen. I learned a lot from him and my teammates, and it literally helped shape my views on technology development and entrepreneurship. In his group, I worked on the performance evaluation of new materials for solar cells. At the time in 2010, the field was dominated by polymeric materials as donors and fullerenes as acceptors, which are the main co major components of a photoactive layer. So we had a lot of donor options to work with, while the workhorse acceptor molecule was a soluble fullerene derivative called PCBM. One major reason for this was PCBM was such a good electron transport material. It was affordable and cheap, and it worked with most of the donor materials. Yet, there were major restrictions on its inherent properties. PCBM does not absorb in the visible, which is necessary to harvest light. It is not easy to modify its frontier energy levels, even though you functionalize it. And therefore, most of the material design efforts were spent to find the ideal donor material for PCBM. But during my PhD, I always had this question in mind for a game changer. Could we design materials that are not similar to fullerene at all and could serve as an acceptor molecule in an organic solar cell? In fact, the discovery of fullerene had nothing to do with a solar cell. Fullerenes were first discovered to understand the absorption spectra of interstellar dust where researchers suspected to be related to some kind of long carbon molecules. And it wasn't soluble in any solvent at the time. And first soluble version was synthesized by this um, scientist, Keith Hamelin, um, in order to treat HIV. It was obvious that we needed more tailored materials for energy conversion. And with my growing desire to explore new materials, I started to look for chemistry um, groups where I can immerse myself with the materials and device physics knowledge I have built over the years. So in 2015, being awarded to Helmholtz postdoc grant made my dreams possible to move to London, Imperial College, to Professor Ian McCulloch's group and the Center of Plastic Electronics. Ian from Scotland is one of the most visionary people I met and a very good communicator. 
He has been a great colleague and a mentor to me since then. Overall, I spent my Imperial College times with the most amazing people I met in my life and the most important ones later on. So two of these great people, Sarah and Andy, both talented chemists from Ian's group and great friends of mine, synthesized one day an acceptor donor acceptor type, which I will call ADA, small molecule FBR. FBR contains electron donating alkylated fluorine as core, where you see in the red circle, and flanked by electron withdrawing rhodonine in blue circles. When you look at FBR, initially you would think it's very similar to one of those donor materials having the same molecular units. So that's why initially we mixed FBR with a PCBM acceptor to assess the solar cell performance, but it didn't work. And this is a moment you think twice to give the bad news to your synthetic chemist friends who spend their months delivering those materials. But before sharing these results, we put the energetics of PCBM along with FBR, which was surprising that why it wasn't working as there was a suitable energy cascade. And then we put the energetics of commonly used donor molecule just by surprise, which is P3HD uh, <clears throat> donor. And then the picture was a bit interesting. So the energetics were telling us that there is also an energy cascade between P3HD and FBR meaning that there can be a charge transfer in between. When we looked at the photoluminescence quenching, as you see, uh, it was proving this charge transfer. And when we made the solar cells from these two, then the results were eye-opening. In fact, FBR wasn't working as a donor molecule, which we initially thought, it was working as an acceptor molecule. And it was performing better than the fullerene analog. So this was a significant finding and just the beginning. We published this work and call these type of molecules non-fullerene acceptors or NFAs. I simply could not believe that the dream of mine as a PhD student thinking years ago that alternative to fullerenes could exist came true with the right people in chemistry at the right time. The rest was just like a beginning of a giant snowball. We immediately looked at the properties of FBR and realized that the molecular structure limits the charge transport as it had a twisted one. So then Sarah and Andy did their magic and synthesized another NFA molecule called IDTBR, which is another ADA structure, and has an extended core, which is indocinodiotiophene IDT. This resulted in polycrystalline and planar structure, as you see from the picture, shifting the absorption to higher wavelengths, increasing the absorption strength, as well as narrowing the band gap. Overall, the energetics of the uh, IDTBR matched P3HD as well, and then the devices we made delivered an efficiency of 6.6%. And at the time, this was the best P3HD-based solar cells. This was a milestone, as uh, you could purchase P3HD in kilogram scale for commercialization. Fast forward, what happened in the field in the last five years after uh, 2016? The performance of organic solar cells today reach up to 19% using these ADA type NFAs, which stamps one of the factors towards scale up. Several different NFAs have been designed, which opened a completely new era for synthetic chemistry. Now you do not rely on a single fullerene molecule to start your synthetic route, and it gives you the flexibility and beauty of chemistry to modify properties. And a phase, they also offer long-term stability and reliability, and they have been shown to be economically viable and produced in kilogram scale, which ensures their potential for commercialization. So when I joined KAUST in 2017 as a faculty, I had the desire to commercialize this technology and push the boundaries. My team designed and developed NFA materials, and uh, which can actually utilize the near IR region, of the spectrum for electricity generation. So this meant is the region that is responsible for heat and also transparent to your eyes and also to plants. This discovery built the foundations of our startup with Daniel, Joel, and Nicola. In the last couple of years, we explored the utilization of this technology in greenhouse roofs and have proven that we could generate electricity without disrupting the plant growth as well as reducing the heat entering. So food security, especially with the current pandemic, 
has become top priority. And this innovation has the potential to have a huge impact for the region I am working in, and also the 1 billion people who live in desert regions globally. And currently, our company has over 40 people working towards our mission of feeding the world sustainably. And of course, none of these achievements and ambitions could be possible without the most influential people in my life, including my Omegas, who grew from a small group in 2017 into a collaborative team today. And thank you all. I'm hoping one day they will share their stories as I am today. There are several great people who contributed to my professional development, and I owe a big thank you to these three, especially Professor Serap Gunesh from Yildiz Technical University, who taught me all about physics of solar cells when I was a chemist and had no idea what I was doing. Professor Sardar Sarichivci from Leos, Austria, for giving me the opportunity to work in his lab during my undergrad and our philosophical chats about life and science and Professor Quinn Yugen from UC Santa Barbara for guiding me during my PhD and our chats and conferences about women in STEM and career opportunities. I cannot miss my husband <clears throat> who supported me in every crazy idea, including marrying me and moving to Saudi Arabia and our most organically synthesized and optimized Ada type molecule, our daughter Ada, for reminding me the real values in life. Lastly, I should mention my family who never understood why I was working day and night in the lab for years, but still believed in me that I could contribute to a bigger change. So with this talk, I hope I have given you all, but most importantly, my mom, an understanding of my research and my passion. So I'm very humbled to be recognized as one of the 12 influential and talented people globally and working towards making this world a better and sustainable place for future generations. Thank you very much for listening and teşekkürler. Thank you so much for that wonderful talk, Daria. Um, your daughter isn't beautiful. Um, I wondered, you know, could you tell us a little more about the transition to starting a company from academic to entrepreneur and what have the challenges, have there been any unique challenges in the past year and a half, obviously, um, to trying to get your company going, raising money. Maybe you could give us a little snapshot of that. Yeah, actually, it's been a roller coaster, as uh, some of you might empathize with me, because I had to do the two jobs and two hats between academic and an entrepreneur. And also, we were trying to make this change in a very unique environment, I have to say. Um, but um, as from our first accelerator program, I remember our mentors said that, you know why 95% of the startups fail? Not about money, not about like the idea, but it's about the team. You know, so I think I've been very fortunate to have an amazing team. And don't ask me how it even happened. I don't know. We've been so fortunate to create that. And also, um, you know, that can take the lead and also do a lot of things, get things done. So it, it, it's been such a journey. And after that, because we were also working with other startups, which one of them is Red Sea Farms, who was working in greenhouses, uh, allowed us to merge in the end saying, hey guys, we're doing, we're working for the same good and we want to do sustainable um, growing of the plants. And now we are actually merged as one company and a much bigger uh, community, I would say. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And again, thank you for your talk. So um, I appreciate it. Thank you.